Robinson and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello again modelers. Well, we're back in my workshop. I've been away for a while so I'm sorry there's not been a video in the last week. So I'm back on it and we're back onto the chipmunk but I've got bogged down quite a bit with the tail end uh, and this is always the way if you go off plan. Um, if you start doing your own thing then <laughs> things just slow right down. The problem is everything I decide, decide to do at the tail end here is going to alter the incidence, the tailplane being level, the tailplane being in the right place, the tailwheel, the rudder, there's all sorts of stuff that could go wrong if I do something wrong at the back here. So you've got to be very careful and you've got to think through what your decision will mean later on in the build. So hopefully <laughs> I've got all my, my ducks in a row. So uh, I've just just finished gluing the last bit in the bit in the in the back end, which you'll see towards the end of this video. So this video is mainly uh, centered around the tailplane.
It's very important that you make sure the tailplane is set square to the centre line of the fuselage. At the nose here, I've set a pin. And through that, it's right on the centre. So it's the central stringer, so it's right in the centre line. And then from that, I'm running a thread back, and this is non-stretch thread. I'm running that back, and I'm going to hold it over the rear corner. And you can see there's a little black mark on my thread. So that's where it, it lies. So if we then lift it, drape it smoothly to this side, you'll see it's right on the corner again. So that tailplane is square to the center line of the fuselage and that's very important that you get that right. Of equal importance is that you get the incidence of the tailplane correct. You've got to get it true in this plane, you've got to get it true in its angle of attack and you've also got to get it level. We'll use the spirit level last. But at the moment what I'm trying to do is increase the negative incidence, i.e. the nose leading edge down so that the tail plane gives us a little bit of up. So at the moment, I'm sitting at just under half. Yeah, just under half a degree of negative instance. We need to be around three quarters of a degree of negative incidence. So I'm going to take a little bit off the seats to bring it down at the front. I'm not too worried about it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two dowels in front of the leading edge of the tailplane to set my incidence so that the tailplane sits into these two dowels, kind of like wing dowels you'd see, and that's going to hold it level this way and keep the incidence. But I want to get the seats more or less right so that this hasn't got to do quite so much work. That's what I'm working on now. Hopefully you can see that on the indicator and we're at about minus three quarters of a degree incidence and that's what I've been aiming for. So this is the laser level I've got. It's a Stanley Kubricks. <laughs> it's a great name I think but uh, Stanley Kubricks uh, crosshaired sort of level, spirit level. And then if you can see what's projected onto the tailplane, we're really close really really close. So I'm not going to worry about the seat any more than that because the fuselage may actually warp <laughs> more than that so it won't really make much difference. But we've started in a good place you know it's it's pretty good. So I've measured the distance back using my line to make sure that the um, tailplane is square. Which you can see it is. Now you've got to be careful with, with using any sort of thread to do this because you can end up stretching the thread slightly. I've just walked into my spirit level. So um, Nudge that around again. Yeah, with the thread that you're using to set the tailplane is true. You've got to be careful. If you use a thread that can flex or stretch, it can mislead you. So you must use a very light pressure and you know a non-stretch thread if you can. This is a nylon thread. It's very uh, very rigid. And also, people forget if you mount something on the front with which to put the thread through as I have, a pin, be very careful because you can actually, if the thread goes up slightly, you can actually flex the pin. And that can make a difference as well. So if you angle it the way I have, then, then the thread will always pull at the same point. And also make sure that you lift it and place it where you want it. Because if you just drag it, you might find it'll do that. It'll catch. So you've got to be careful. A few gotchas. But you'll get there, it's fairly straightforward. So what you're seeing here is the tailplane is fitted onto the fuselage and the bolt done up. And then on the front 
you can see the leading edge of the tailplane has two dowels fitted in it. Those two dowels are passing through that one eighth plywood plate and that plate is loose. It can move wherever it wants, but it is a good fit to the dowels. And in front of that, you see another one eighth plate that is notched to go over this sort of tailplane saddle, I call it. So what I'm going to do is clamp the two plates together and then I'm going to run some glue in the joint to lock this plate in place and it'll also attach to that plate so it'll laminate the two together but locked onto the saddle. I've done the incidence and it is fine it's minus five minus half a degree sorry which is it, it needs to be between minus half and minus three quarter so we, we're good to go on that. Uh, I've also fired up the laser level and we're good to go on that as well. So, um, so that's excellent. So I'll just dismantle this front bit again, add some glue and then I'll clamp those two together and then I'll clamp that lot together as one. And what that will mean is once I've undone that screw at the back for the tailplane, it will slide backwards and out. So the tailplane will be retained by the dowels at the front and the screw at the back. So let's have a look at how it's worked out. So all of this glue is, is, is pretty much dry. So if I undo this Allen bolt at the back, this Allen bolt is actually positioned in the center line of the rudder. So what you do is you move the rudder to one side to expose this Allen bolt. So in normal static judging and all sorts of things like that, the bolt is actually obscured by the rudder. Clever, eh? Not my idea, Dave Wormsley, clever guy. So that's the bolt out. And then all you do is pull the tailplane back and it's out. Now with the tailplane out, I've got full access to the rudder linkage, which comes up here. The rudder will be removable, which is, I'm still, it's a work in progress. Um, so you'll have an arm coming up with a 90 degree bend on it that the rudder slides onto. And then I'm thinking of using Robart pockets in the fin that will hold the Robart pin hinges. I'm hoping. Any feedback you've got on using Robart um, pockets, please put them in the comments before I go too far. Uh, this area down here will then be all the tail wheel and rudder activation. So there'll be the elevator push rods coming through from the sides right out to the back to connect to the elevator. And down the middle, well, off to each side of the middle will be the two closed loops that operate the, the rudder and also slaving from that will be to the tail wheel, which I am going to make um, steerable. The full size it isn't, but on mine it will be steerable. So there we go. That's how it is. So um, to refit the tailplane, just like that. And then we do the bolt up again, remember, with the rudder off to one side, or with the rudder actually removed, and fit the rudder afterwards. It's possibly a bit too long, this screw. I'll shorten it when, uh, when we get there. And there we go. As simple as that. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, press uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.